Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about your investment in an underwater housing and why you may be happier with a housing that's only a third of the cost of the more expensive options out there. For this example, I'm going to be comparing the iClade housing for one of my favorite cameras, the Canon EOS R5, to the Nauticam equivalent. First off, let's talk about materials. We've spent years refining choices of materials that hit the right balance between weight and strength. It's just like engineering for an aircraft. Every ounce in weight reduction will save energy in packing and travel and will reduce your drag in the water. I have these two housings set up with a full-size acrylic 8-inch dome port for the Canon 14-35mm RF f4 lens. Nauticam does offer more expensive and heavier port options, but this is the standard. When comparing weights, our housing is 2.2 pounds lighter than the aluminum version. I've heard our housings referred to as bulky, but let's be honest, any underwater housing for a larger camera is going to feel bulky compared to the camera itself. In this case, our housing appears to me to be about the same shape and actually slightly smaller than the Nauticam. I think we both leave an appropriate amount of space around the camera inside of the housing to allow for attachments of accessories, as well as to protect your camera in the case of a small leak. If you look at the polycarbonate body of our housing, it's light colored by design to reflect the sun and keep your camera cooler in between dives. Furthermore, plastics are much easier to maintain because they don't degrade with exposure to salt water the way metals do. Circling back to the 2.2 pound differential, most of us don't have unlimited baggage or unlimited funds. It's kind of like packing a backpack to climb the top of a mountain. Every ounce has to earn its way into that pack. I also want to max out my luggage allowance with the tools that will help me capture the best images. A housing does not fundamentally affect your photo results. Good lighting and lenses on the other hand do. So if I could save a pound, I would rather put it towards a better strobe or a better lens. There is a limitation worth mentioning, which is the 200 foot or 60 meter depth rating. If you find yourself diving way beyond recreational limits, you'll need to consider an aluminum housing that's adapted to those pressures. Let's talk about confidence. I know I'm biased, but I like seeing through the back of the housing. Even when taking my time with assembly and doing a vacuum test, there's always a chance of a leak with any brand housing. With a clear back, I can put my housing into a tank of water and see for myself that everything is dry inside. I am not relying on a flashing light or an alarm. I can actually see what's happening. And that's the whole point of an underwater housing is to waterproof the camera. I think that the clear back puts that functionality front and center. When assembling a solid block housing, I kind of feel like a magician putting a $5,000 camera into a black box and hoping that everything comes back out in one piece. You'll hear the word ergonomics thrown around a lot when it comes to engineering. But what I really want to talk about is intuition and muscle memory. The best underwater photographers in the world know their camera like the back of their hand. And that's because they're using it in and out of the water all the time. When you get used to using a camera on land, you know in your mind and in your muscles exactly where everything is. And that's why we replicate that on the outside of our housings. The controls are placed in the same relation to each other, only enlarged and made comfortable for underwater use. Because of this, you don't have to relearn everything. The camera's operations are accessed quickly and easily the same way you're used to using it on land. Conversely, if your housing has a different set of ergonomics than your camera, there is going to be a learning curve and retraining of your brain. I'm sure eventually the benefits would be realized after hundreds or potentially thousands of actuations, but unfortunately not all of us get to spend that much time in the water. Another feature of our controls is the simplicity. Direct drive controls are more simple and therefore more reliable. If something does need adjustment over time, it's generally something that you can do yourself. We offer O-ring service kits and the replacements can be done in the field as necessary. Or if you want to send it to us for service, we currently charge around 250 US dollars. On the other hand, I have heard that some of the aluminum housings cost upwards of $600 for the recommended annual service, which is an added cost that most of us don't really consider when setting out to make the initial purchase. So that actually brings me to the total cost of ownership. I priced out a housing for the Canon R5 and the RF 14-35mm f4 lens, which is a personal favorite of mine. My must-have list includes the housing, of course, two handles, 
vacuum pump, the lens port, as well as the ability to trigger external strobes manually. Adding that list up on our website comes to a grand total of $2,665, while adding up that list on a US-based Nauticam dealer came to a grand total of $6,828. So if you don't have a calculator handy, that's a difference of $4,200. That is a big price difference for ergonomics. Now I can start to see why a lot of underwater photo stores will talk up an aluminum housing for that kind of money. The real question is, what could I be doing with $4,200? This is a no-brainer for me, as the first thought is to add strobes. So I'll put in two of our flagship professional-grade DS230s. You can spend more on strobes, but you can't get more power or better light quality. And even after adding these two strobes, along with a cord and a TTL converter, I'm only using up $3,125 of the $4,200. That leaves me with over $1,000 to burn. From here, I could get another lens, ideally one that I can use both above and below the water, or I could use that money to actually go somewhere amazing and take photos, which let's be honest, is the most effective way to actually get good underwater photos. Ultimately, there are so many great products underwater right now, and just about any camera and housing combination on the market today can be used to produce spectacular results. I think once you decide to invest in a quality system and learn how to use it underwater, you will not be disappointed. Don't forget, we're here to help you along in the journey. If you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out to us in the comments below or by shooting an email to iClight at iClight.com.